Hello and welcome to Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. We are in Dambulla today, virtually of course, and the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Dambulla Caves Temple. The Dambulla rock itself is 160 meters high and surrounded by more than 80 documented caves. On a clear day, a panoramic view of the surrounds is quite breathtaking. You may even see Sigiriya. The five caves which are open to tourists are beyond magnificent with its well-preserved statues and murals, 2,100 square meters in fact. Oh, and archaeologists have found human skeletons which are about 2,700 years old in a burial site close to the caves, which means prehistoric man lived in these caves long before Buddhism came to Sri Lanka. Ahead on the show, we ask Chairman of Kasa, Ikram Kutilan, about the port's woes Venture into the skies with air traffic controller Sewandi Karunanayaka and they are on People's Bank News Capsule on Singer Life in 60, Sinisha makeup artistry's Nisha Seniviratna reveals her other side. And we have an exclusive with Dr. Dinesh Palipana, Queensland's Australian of the Year and the state's first quadriplegic doctor. On Selinko Life, let's talk. We begin with our kaleidoscope snapshot. Four projects have already been lined up for the new 275-acre industrial park for fabric processing in Eravur. Sri Lanka may see tourists again provided they undergo 14 days quarantine or travel under a strict travel bubble. The combined corporate earnings of 267 listed companies decreased by 58% to 17.7 billion rupees year on year for the quarter ending June. News from Amban Pitya School for Children with Special Needs. A visually impaired Tamil student passed the Grade 5 scholarship examination using Braille in Singhala. The world's three most expensive cities are now Hong Kong, Zurich and Paris. Last year, it was Singapore, Osaka and Hong Kong. And on with our People's Bank News Capsule. Sri Lanka's shipping hub status is being rocked by pandemic waves. For the last few months, the port has been battling manpower shortages, yard congestion and inter-terminal tracking delays, resulting in problems in servicing of ships coming into port. The Sri Lanka Ports Authority was made an essential service this week. Chairman of the Ceylon Association of Shipping Agents, Ikram Kutilan, explains the ramifications to our economy in this context. The biggest ramification is that the port of Colombo is going to lose business and also lose ships because the whole issue is that when ships are delayed they are going to drop the port and go to another port. If they start going to other ports, exporters will not be able to load cargo because they will not have uh, vessels to load cargo. Importers are also going to have delayed imports because the cargo will be transshipped to another port and rock Colombo and additionally costs for importers and exporters is going to go up. So it is important that the port operates without any disturbances and the ships come into port and operate without any delays. People need to come to work. They need to somehow have a system where the workers are given the confidence that they are not going to get affected, they are working for the nation and also that whatever that they do is going to benefit the country. With all the doom and gloom this year, the Colombo Stock Exchange has remained extremely resilient. Market turnover was 80% higher year on year and daily average turnover doubled compared to 2019. Local investors contributed 74% of the trading volumes and more younger investors were seen trading. When the market closed on Thursday, the indices was down slightly by 0.29% and the daily turnover was lower than that of last week, averaging 1.88 billion rupees. WTI oil was largely unchanged this week at 41.50 US dollars per barrel and gold prices were slightly lower than last week at $1,870 per ounce, pressurized by a stronger US dollar. There's nothing to stop anyone from reaching the sky. For the first time in the history of the Sri Lanka Air Force, Pilot Officer ADPL Gunaratna and Pilot Officer RT Viravardhana became the first female officers to be awarded the prestigious Flying Brevet and become pioneering female military aviators in Sri Lanka. 
Pilot Officer R.T. Veeravardhana also created history when she was awarded the prestigious Sword of Honor for Best All-Round Performance. This prompted me to look for male-dominated careers where women had made inroads into and I came across the profession of air traffic controllers. Currently in the US, 33% of air traffic controllers are women and pretty much the same percentage is maintained in Sri Lanka as well with 21 of the 86 air traffic controllers being women. So, I checked with air traffic controller Sewandi Karuna Naika on what the job was like. First, it was actually a male-dominated uh, profession, but uh, very recently, more female uh, air traffic controllers are joining the uh, trade. I am a graduate from Peradhan University, a physical science graduate. We had to go through uh, several tests, about five of them, any aptitude test and things like that. Aptitude test and a voice test and anything. They check uh, what you know, a multitasking ability of uh, our, of a person to get into this job because uh, one, uh, we have to switch between the jobs very quickly. Striking the balance between the personal life, my family life and uh, the job, my career was the biggest challenge. Dutch students have created a fully functioning electric car made entirely out of waste, including plastics fished out of the sea, recycled pet bottles and household garbage. The car has been named Luca and can reach a top speed of 90 km an hour. It's just a little over a month to Christmas, but it's not too early for Santa though, who decided to add a bit of cheer as he swam and paddled in the Dead Sea and stuck a decorated Christmas tree in the salty sand. And like our Dead Sea Santa, if you'd like to bring some Christmas cheer, here's how you can help. These test calendars have been created by the Ease Foundation, which aims to create productive, stimulating lives for people with disabilities. Please get one for yourself or gift one to someone and celebrate the diversity that children and adults with disabilities bring into this world. So that's our People's Bank News Capsule this week. Coming up is Selinko Life, Let's Talk. And we've got Queensland's Australian of the Year, Dr. Dinesh Palipana, exclusively on our show today. With Selinko Life Pension Saver, Sri Lanka's premier retirement plan, start planning for your retirement today. Selinko Life, a relationship for life. More than 1 billion people in the world live with some sort of disability, and 200 million of them have considerable challenges functioning. Dr. Dinesh Palipana is Queensland's first quadriplegic doctor and the country's second. He wasn't always a quadriplegic though. Born in Sri Lanka, the family migrated to Australia and he completed his LLB and then decided to go into medicine. But a catastrophic accident left him with a massive cervical spinal cord injury. From then on, the challenges have been unimaginable. While he had to rewire himself to adapt to his new life, his medical career faced hurdle after hurdle primarily because the entire system was not just used to having a quadriplegic doctor in their midst. Proving himself over and over again and showing that he can, Dinesh has broken barrier after barrier, becoming a tireless advocate for inclusivity in medicine and the general workplace. But changing attitudes is a very difficult uphill task. Dinesh, what does it feel like to be Queensland's Australian of the Year? It's uh, such an incredible honor, and I don't really know how to feel. Um, which I mean, thinking I'm, I think I'm still, uh, I'm still soaking it all in. And um, but it's amazing. It's an incredible honor. If you actually look at the inclusiveness of society, what are the biggest barriers there are to making society inclusive to people with disabilities? It's attitudes of our society because we always think about what barriers people have and we assume things about people um, I was just listening to my boss talk this morning and um, he was saying that you know it's uh, when I started out my career people made a lot of assumptions about what I could and couldn't do um, but he said never make assumptions about people so I think we have to put our assumptions and prejudices away what are the automatic the preconceived psychological barriers that communities have in making society inclusive in this context? I think we have a lot of, um, you know, just, just because someone has a disability or a physical disability, 
it doesn't mean that their life's over. They still have the same hopes and dreams and they have the same abilities. I always like to pull out Stephen Hawking as an example because he was a guy that uh, couldn't move any part of his body and even needed support to talk, but he changed the way we think about the universe. And I think we need to give everyone that opportunity, you know, whether disability or not, what race, what ethnicity, whatever gender, uh, we need to we need to give everyone a chance. Um, but it's again those prejudices and assumptions that stop us from doing that. Dinesh, what has been your most effective tool personally in this inclusiveness journey? Uh, not to plug Nike, but just do it. I, that, that's really been the um, best tool that I've had because, you know, even in my own head, I had all these ideas about whether this would work and all these fears about how I would do things. And you can intellectualize things forever, but that that is actually what paralyzes you. But you just have to do it. You have to take action. Sri Lanka's fundamentals in displaying inclusiveness for people with disabilities is limited. Um, there's little focus, it's almost like an afterthought. How do you think the mindset needs to be changed and where should we start? You know, the, I always think about this. We have human rights conventions and we have laws and we have policies and we have all these big beautiful things that um, are supposed to change the world for people but they don't mean anything unless each and every one of us does something. So I think we have to take it upon ourselves, every person. Every person has to think about how they can make the world a bit more inclusive, how they can make the world a bit more accessible and how they can include someone. And that's what matters. You know, my, my friends in Sri Lanka, they, they healed my soul when I had the accident and they gave, gave me the chance. But they did that just for one person and now I'm able to live my life and do all these things. And so it just takes one person. Briefly, what is a lesson that you would like to share with society and with people with disabilities, you know, those who can integrate into the community like yourself? You know, I, I think these days we have the technology, the means to do things. We can bridge physical gaps. So that, that physical thing isn't really an issue anymore but we really have to change our attitudes and we really have to work with one person at a time. My mom, she loves this saying where she says that if you can help one person, you may not change the world, but you'll change the world for them. And that's really powerful. I think we, we, we really need to just start doing that. Start helping one person, start putting away those assumptions and um, let's, let's make this an amazing world. Disability is a human rights issue because people with disabilities experience inequality. They are denied access to healthcare, employment, education and even community participation. People with disabilities are subject to violations of dignity. There's violence, abuse, prejudice and disrespect. As Dinesh says, start with ourselves, look within, make a change in attitude and give a person with disabilities the space to live their life and to be included. As a footnote, Dinesh is currently involved in novel rehabilitation technique research for spinal cord injuries and will soon be tying the knot. Good luck Dinesh, thank you for joining us on Selinko Life Let's Talk and for prompting us to think differently. With Selinko Life Pension Saver, Sri Lanka's premier retirement plan, start planning for a retirement today. Selinko Life, a relationship for life. Next up on Singer Life in 60, Nisha Seniviratna changes faces. We have a little bit of magic on Singer Life in 60 today. Senisha makeup artistry's Nisha Seniviratna, a qualified makeup artist with a fashion background from RMIT in Australia, is passionate about makeup artistry and she uses the face as a canvas to express her creativity.
up recently known for my character transformations. I love using my face as a canvas for all things makeup and to express my creativity. Um, I've always been into makeup, but in terms of transformations, it's only been about two years. And um, yeah, I just love being able to express and challenge myself. Uh, and it excites me that there's an audience that loves what I do and yeah I just hope to keep evolving that and I guess entertaining everyone out there. It's a wild thing. Thank you to Nisha Senviratna for being here on Singer Life in 60. How can each of us make a difference to ensure that people with disabilities are made to feel inclusive? Any ideas? Let us know. Write to us at kaleidoscopeweekly1 at gmail.com or comment on our YouTube link. If you would like to see our past Let's Talk, Life in 60 and News Capsule clips, they're all on our playlist on the YouTube channel. And do click on the subscribe button on the channel, Kaleidoscope with Savitri Rodrigo, and press the bell icon to remain updated. It is our responsibility to be careful, not just for ourselves, but for others around us. So wear your mask, wash your hands, and avoid crowded places. Everyone will be that much safer. Now here's your kaleidoscope takeaway. If you don't really understand what someone else's circumstances are, it's easy to be ignorant about what they can and can't do. Dr. Dinesh Palipanan.